the host of this event and Edward Jones have an existing business relationship. This event is not an endorsement or testimonial of the services provided by Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Joe Johnson. On this episode of the Roundtable Podcast, we talk investing, Danny. Yeah, we talk investing. It's time to be a fly on the wall and to get some skin in the game. Cool. Yeah, I think this is just, you really got to take this shit serious. 100%. I think uh, more people need to like listen and hear this kind of stuff. Like this is the type of stuff that uh, can like change your life, like change your genera- like generational wealth, like all that kind of shit. That's the shit that we always preach. So like listen in and then, you know, take something away from it. Agreed, Trey. Uh, take a lot of like this is super high value for our, our entire listenership. Um, this shit changed my life. I'm bullish on trying to make sure everyone understands the basics because I was not taught them young. Joe Johnson does a great job. So let's roll to the show. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. Shout out MaxEverMuscle.com. Sam Adams Beer. We have special guests in the building. Oh, the no. the Green Fizz That's right. is yeah, we, live because yeah. this is the next Wednesday. Yeah, the Green Fizz is live. Listen, if you want your face blown off yeah. by this new pre workout, in a good way, in a yeah. good way, in a good way, crazy pumps, crazy focus. Uh, it's got a warning label. It is called the Green Fizz. It is matte black. Yep. Artwork by Cole Susak, the man, looking super gangster. You guys have to try the new pre workout out from that's right. Effort. You're gonna all, all your homies. You know they're gonna see you in the gym hitting fucking arms. Your sleeves are about to burst off. They're gonna be like, bro, what? Yep. What are you doing? And they're like, I'm slinging the Green Fizz. I'm gonna I'm gonna say we have the <laughs> hottest new pre workout on the entire fucking market. 100. percent So it's it's about to be crazy. All right, special guest in the building. Joe Johnson. What up, Joe? Up, Joe? Good morning. How you guys doing? Good, man. So, Joe, uh, you work with a lot of the homies, uh, financial planning, obviously myself, um, too. And it's like we reference you quite a bit. And I think it's good just to go over some basic financial stuff. I know, obviously, with you being a planner, you can always say so many different things. Right, But right. Uh, I think it would be good. Uh, what, Danny, why, uh, you, why can, are you laughing? Can we, can we just tell the, how he, like, found you or how you Oh, yeah, no, we definitely need to start yeah, that. Yeah, do that. For sure. Yeah, so – um, well, because I think there's a good narrative to there because Joe is out there really busting his ass to get business, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, Probably Joe, welcome 10 to- years ago? Uh, I was, yeah, I think it was 10 years Probably, ago. I was thinking about that this morning. Yeah. yeah. So Joe is from the Ohio Valley where me and Cole are from. Originally, we played, uh, I don't remember Joe growing up, but we our high schools play against each other and we have some mutual friends that I played against in basketball and stuff. Shout out Chef Bo. He's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> As everybody laughs. <laughs> shout out Jeff. Uh, Chef Bo is going to love that we gave him a shout out. Yeah. Oh, he's amazing. <laughs> Um, so I'm coming home one day, uh, I just moved to Granville. I've been there, I don't know, maybe six months or so and got a door to door salesman at, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling in basically the same time as Joe. Joe's like walking up to my, my front door. I'm thinking Is Joe in a suit. Uh, yeah, I think Joe, he was he's probably in a shirt and tie. He was in a shirt and tie. Yeah. He's knocking on doors, you know, trying to build his business, just introducing himself to people. So I'm like, the fuck is this guy? <laughs> so I'm like, and then on top of it, you're there to talk about money. So I don't know you. You're on my doorstep and you're talking about money. But one of the things I ask people very shortly after I meet them is, where are you from? And I don't know if you already knew I was from the Valley, but when, meaning he said, oh, I'm from, you know, so-and-so. And I was like, oh, we always say a general area. Then you whittle it down if you're yeah, from there. Where are right. you actually from? Yeah. And I, I had like, no idea where you're from. Yeah. So when I heard he was from the Ohio Valley and that's just, I think where anybody's from, it's like automatically like, all right. I'll give this dude a chance. And then I just like the fact that he was out there hustling. So Joe, talk about how many doors you probably knocked on for how long? Oh, so the, the goal was 25 a day. Okay. And that was so hard to do for five days a week. But, but let me back up. Mm -hmm. I would knock on hundreds of doors a day. The goal was to meet 25 people, get 25 people's name and phone number. Mm -hmm. So I would have to meet hundreds of people a day to get to 25. And if I didn't get, so that was for five days a week. If I didn't get, you know, my 25 a day, then I worked every Saturday and Saturday was a jackpot day because everybody oh, yeah. was home. So, you know, most of the doors I'm knocking on, which was fantastic. When you pulled in, I pulled in your driveway, you pulled in right behind me. That's perfect for me because I know I'm going to talk to somebody. Yeah, because you're right there. I can't yeah. get away from you. You know, half the doors, nobody answers or yeah. they they see you and don't want to open the door. So, you know, from that standpoint. I thought you were a Mormon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just kidding. So if anybody knocks on my door today, yeah, I buy it. Yeah. I buy it because I hustle. have so much respect for 
people willing to go door to door, but I literally would pull into a neighborhood, uh, not yours because the driveways are so long. Yeah. I would pull into a neighborhood. I would park my car in the front entrance of, of the neighborhood and I would just walk the whole neighborhood all the way around and end up back in my car later that day. You mean you just didn't post on Facebook? Hey, I'm a financial planner. No, no. <laughs> See, no. but that, that's, that's no what Facebook I want to make a point then. of that is because you said, no one knows me here. I didn't grow up here. I'm new to the area. Like you're, you had to go like Joe knows everybody. That's like the running joke with me. Like mm -hmm. he, if I don't know somebody in town, I just ask Joe cause he knows them, mm -hmm. but that's his job is to literally know everybody. Yeah. I get so many great clients that way. So many, I have so many crazy stories I could, I could tell also I'll share, I'll share one with you just cause I think it's really cool. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I would walk around with this information piece in my hand. And the information piece talked about like, what are you saving for, for, or what are you saving for, for retirement, for school, you know, um, kids education, for a wedding, whatever, just a, like a conversation starter. But the background of the flyer was a, uh, a lighthouse hmm. that was just a, a random lighthouse. I didn't, okay. you know, didn't think anything of it. I, I was, uh, in this guy's neighborhood he pulled in his driveway. I had just knocked on his door and nobody answered. So I'm across the street. I see him pull in. So I'm like a magnet. No, yeah. No. <laughs> I go shark. right over and introduce myself to him. And um, he's like, you know what? I've already got two financial advisors. The last thing I need is a third. I'm like, hey, I completely understand. You know, this is an information piece, has my info on it. Take it. If you ever need anything, just have a question, give me a call. I hand it, hand it to him. He looks at it and says, uh, is this Peggy's Cove? I had no idea what he was talking about. Talking about the lighthouse. He was talking about the lighthouse. I, I said, I have no idea. He said, I was just wherever that's located, like Maine or somewhere. He's like, I was just in northeastern part of the country, took this same picture with my own camera, hung it up and put it up in my, in my house. Come inside. I want to show it to you. So I'm inside looking at this guy's yep. picture of this lighthouse th that is the same one on my flyer. That you had nothing and, to do with. Yep. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, he only has one financial advisor now. Ah! That's right. So, That's right. Uh, just random things like that that I, I would always tell the new people, like, hey, at least get your flyer in somebody's hand. Maybe they throw it in the garbage. Maybe they stick it in the drawer. Who knows what's going to happen. But, yeah, I had a lot of... A lot of long days, knocking on the door, getting, you know, yelled at. So how old, how old were dogs. you whenever you're doing this? What's that? Like how old were you? How old? So I'm 45. I was 31, 32. Gotcha. So yep. you were just starting your financial planning mm -hmm. and stuff yep. at Edward Jones yep. then. Yeah. So what what were you doing before? Like so I always had uh, sales jobs and uh, straight out of college I worked for. Um, a uniform company called Cintas based mm -hmm. out of Cincinnati area. And I sold, sold floor mats and, and different products that they had. And then from there, I actually went and sold radio advertising for you know, all the big radio stations yeah. here, here in town. And I was there for three or four years. But the, the key to all that is straight out of college, I got introduced to, a, to an Edward Jones guy and started sending him 50 bucks a month to to invest into my Roth IRA Got it. and um, that my financial advisor ended up rec recruiting me to, to come to Edward Jones mm -hmm. and then he quit and I ended up taking taking over his office so I went from one side of the table to the other where did you go where was your office at first Joe was it always in Granville so I started in Pickerington. That's right. Okay. Um, and then I moved into Bexley for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the Granville office opened. Okay. And I moved in, moved to Granville. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is now they obviously work with a ton of people and they're coming through your office, but like people see that, which is quote unquote, kind of the ending phase of all that. They don't see or hear about that first part, mm -hmm. which everybody yeah. has that part to a business that has grown. No one just gets the jump to this phase yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what i mean but and, it, and that's a and hard thing to times do times have changed yeah. obviously with covid so we you know our company had to stop door-to-door -door advertising or your know, marketing however you want to look at it there for a while so 
the new people that that are starting they're coming in and they're they're relying on social media mm -hmm. to to grow their business so it kind of makes me mad because they didn't have to go through what i yeah. what i went through. that makes sense though of why they changed the guidelines a little bit they were probably forced to yeah because of that that makes a lot of sense now why they're like yeah sure go on podcasts yeah you know yeah. what i mean that makes sense can you talk so you gave us a, a awesome story can you just flip it and give us something that happened that was like like one of your horror stories mm. on the on the pavement yeah i'm saying this too because i've done this before too and i've i've worn the tie and the coat yeah and i've seen yeah. people just like man like this fucker is coming up to my yeah door now. well you know I mean, p police called, you know, multiple times <laughs> Amazing. Just, just because stranger danger, which, yeah. you know, I get it. So, but I was always legit. I always went to, uh, you know, wherever the county or wherever I needed to and got the solicitor's permit. Mm. So I always, I was always, you know, he followed the rules, I always followed the rules. And so, you know, a couple, that, a couple things like that happen, but really the, the only thing I remember, um, and I remember it perfectly i remember the house the neighborhood i was in new albany and um this woman just started screaming at me to get off of her lawn i wasn't on her lawn but i was you know standing on yeah. her driveway i had not even made it up to her door yet um she happened to be standing there and um she she had just walked outside i think it was and i just made a comment like oh hey how you doing it's a beautiful day isn't it or something like that and she just unloaded on me, uh, just started screaming. And, um, you know, that, I'm, that was it. I mean, she just was screaming. I just said, listen, hey, I was just stopping by to introduce myself. I didn't, yeah. didn't mean anything. <laughs> Catch and, you later. Uh, Damn. And, uh, That's not too bad on, then, Joe. You didn't get, on. like, bit by a dog or no, arrested or anything? No, I never got anything. bit by a dog, no. All right. That's pretty good so. then. So you go, what, a block of time of, what, three years, four years, five years doing that? How long did you do yeah, that for? Yeah, three years probably. So, yeah. and I, I've always read, and Mike Healy would talk about this a lot. One of the MLM guys I, you know, learned from, he's like 24 months to 36 months of dedicated business like that, which to me is similar to answering every tweet, every direct message. Every, for, and I still do that, but I did that, especially when we were banging in MP days, I would spend hours responding just like if somebody walked in, which no one expected. So then the carryover of the relationship was completely different, which is why you know, still have these businesses, I believe. So it's like, you have to be in the trenches like that. It just, yeah. it doesn't, it, it's, no one gets around it. Right. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. There's parts of everyone's business that operates that way. So yeah, well, it's, it's good and you know hear. what? And it, it makes me proud sitting here today of should be what I've built and know that, you know, I had a, a, I had a lot to do with my hard work. So Hell yeah. Uh, one thing I want to mention too, is that, you know, I was, <clears throat> donating we'll say or contributing to my uh ira and doing the things that joe said to do and i was just letting him do his thing and i, I never really asked a lot of questions early because i didn't really know anything i never took the time to do it but then when i started doing my own research asking joe questions and then literally walked in one day and was like all right so you're telling me because i understood the i read about the dividends he had always explained the dividends but i never really like took time with it because i was always just building my businesses and doing minimally with the set i needed to do i said if I give you this, this, this stock right here costs $35 and it pays a $3 dividend. I give you 35,000. I now make $3,000 a year. He said, yes. And I keep making that unless they cut it. Yes. And if we just let it redrip into it, every time it pays me that money quarterly, it buys new shares that then pay me more dividends. Yes. So now if I just give you enough money that equals six, seven, whatever percent, up to X amount, then that is my salary for just owning the stock. Yes. Holy shit. It's that simple. <laughs> Fuck. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, then on the flip side of that is then understanding compounding. And I think that's a good thing for everybody that $50, you said I gave $50, like yeah. $50, like is enough if you start early enough and people don't think it equals to anything, Joe. And I think that that's right, part of why right. people don't get into it because they think they need to have so much. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, you got to start somewhere, right? And uh, I and I tell people all the time that if you think you can do a hundred dollars a month, do fifty bucks a month, do seventy-five. Like I want you to contribute something that is not going to stress you out. To um, you know that you have to look at every month, like oh yeah, what what date does that does that hundred dollars come yeah. out? You want to set it and forget it, 
and then you know each year we talk at least each year we're going to talk about up in that a little bit or you get a good tax return and want to put a little bit in or you know i don't know anything you you get some extra money you, you add to it when you can but it's similar to working out it's it's routine mm -hmm. consistency stay you know sticking with it it is not something that you know you don't become a millionaire overnight you gotta you gotta keep contributing and in long term it'll be it'll be fantastic so how do you um for the total like novice like someone walks in, in the door and then you know they heard the word compounding or you yeah know, whatever or dividend or yeah whatever it is like how do you at the most fundamental basic level how do you explain that because so many people have heard the like, double pe double a penny example right you know, double right. A penny every becomes day. what like three million after yeah 30 days it's like hard like to wrap your head around it and i like literally did this with my mom and i even like did the math with her at day over day and she's still like you still can't like intuitively like wrap your brain around it because it doesn't seem to be re I think real, you feel like right? you need a big chunk of money and yeah. you need to know everything about it like yeah. I feel like that's how that's how that's how I used to think like you know because I thought I was gonna fucking sell out for some bazillions of dollars then I'd figure it out but I realized that that's not how I should have been operating which is why I'm trying to do content around it now is like I should have been putting 250 dollars in a month because I could or 500 or 50 or whatever yeah. it is and that's why I'm trying to you know the demo that's paying attention to us now and why I've spoke to all these guys about got to start earlier than I did. You're not guaranteed that yeah. whatever you think is going to happen is going to happen. Right. Just the fact. You know, people know so little yeah. about investing that it really doesn't matter if I'm talking about compounding, if I'm talking about dividends, if I'm talking about what a Roth IRA is versus a traditional IRA. We'll go through all that they, too. They have no idea. They have, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And so I really, I consider myself to be more of a teacher mm -hmm. than, than anything because you come in and sit down and you know, people are so like anxious or, or nervous to tell me that they don't understand. Yeah. Like that's the first thing that nine out of 10 people say when they, when they walk in and it's probably why it's taken them so long to come in. It's probably they, 90% too, they, ain't it, Joe? You know, they don't know what to ask. They don't know yeah. what to say. And I end up, you know, talking most of the time anyways, but it's, it's, I, I'll tell you, you know, Danny, listen, everybody that comes in here tells me the same thing. They tell me that they, you know, they're don't understand. They don't know what to ask. And I would tell you, if you could be a fly on the wall for a week sitting in my office, you'd feel good about yourself because everybody that comes in here says the same thing. They do not get it. They don't understand. So you know, I try to pride myself and I, you know, feedback that I hear from, from my clients is that I try to speak on a level that they can understand whether I'm, you know, trying to picture that they're a, you know, a high school kid sitting there. It doesn't matter. And even, even if I, I'll, I'll ask like, Hey, you know, have you heard of a dividend? Yeah. Do you, do you understand how it works? Yeah. I know you don't understand how it yeah. works. So, uh, I just ask you that for fun yeah. in my in my brain, and then I go ahead and explain to you what a dividend works, and I'll and I'll tell you up front that listen, I'll probably explain this to you every time we meet or every time <laughs> yeah. we talk. I think because, you did that for me because it just takes time. It takes repetition, like everything else. That you, it takes multiple times to hear it to get it, to understand it. And then, and then as you start investing, you, you see it working and, and then it all, it just takes time to, mm -hmm. to work. I got so. addicted to seeing my dividend income go up. I mean, once I understood that and it's the funny thing is it's the most basic that, I mean, my mom, exactly the same thing. My mom has never invested. We've talked about our financial IQ being zero, like growing up, like, and she was like, I don't even know if I'm going to go to the meeting. I'll just let you and Randy go. I'm like, ma, She's like, I'm just, she even says, and I hate when she said, I'm just so stupid. I'm not going to know. I'm like, would you just quit and walk in here? And Joe is going to look at you because everyone says this stuff and just listen and do like 20 minutes later. She's like, oh, that's not that difficult. If I put in $30, I make $2 and then we hope the stock goes up. I'm like, yes, not that hard. Really you know what I mean? They're classic. I call them. They love it. And, uh, you know, they put me on speakerphone yep. and, they're, and they're both <laughs> always there. You know, your mom's always in the background. And, you know, we have our conversation. So good. I can tell that they're both, they're both into in it. it. Yeah. In it. It's so good. Cool. Yeah. Well, I guess I want to start out like how often, you know, someone's starting that, you know, they think they can only contribute a hundred bucks or something like that. But in reality, they can, they can probably contribute more 
because of their spending habits. Like they're not mm-hmm. budgeting to yeah, invest first. They're they're spending. They're getting their paycheck, their money, and then they're going out and they're buying whatever they want. They're doing whatever they need to. And then the last thought, like the last thought of the month, is how much money can I invest now? Right. Not not as soon as you get not the money. The first thought. Not 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 right. making the investing a priority. So then you can don't have to worry about it and then you can go spend whatever how yeah. often do you run into that yeah um well i would say that a part of that that's the norm happens probably every, <laughs> happens every day because i think everybody can save more if they look at how much they spend at chipotle yes. this month right you stop going to chipotle um you know every week then there's your there's your extra money that that you could invest but I think I think I could dig down in every everybody's situation and find where they could contribute something or increase what they're what they're contributing. Yeah, because just just like in my personal experience, like with you, whenever I was starting out, you told me the the max you can contribute per month for the Roth IRA, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. You said it was basically five hundred bucks per month or mm-hmm. something like that, it, right? Yep, yeah, used to be. Mm-hmm. And I consciously knew that. I, no matter what, I was going to try to hit that 500. Yeah. Like that was that Which was the main goal, that right? was the main importance to me. It was like I'm going to hit the 500. Whatever's a, after that, I'm going to adjust how I live to make sure I can always do that because I know long term it's going to pay off more it's than huge. you know yeah. whatever, and I could do so, it. So yeah, but yeah, you know, a huge but that's a big to, shift though where most younger people, especially, aren't saying, "Let me talk about my investment first mm-hmm. in the new Jays I want to buy second. Yeah, doesn't fucking right. work that way. It wasn't that way for me. That's why right. I was trying to hope it, it was going to be that way for you guys right. because of that. Cause that's how it should be. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, uh, I'll sit down with people and you know, if I can get someone to give me a list of all their, you know, expenses and, and what they're spending their money on, that's great. But I'll, I've sat on the phone and called to try to negotiate their, their cell phone bill or their, Um, you know, what's your interest rate that you're paying on, on your mortgage and, you know, not, not today, we're not having that conversation, but, but over the last couple of years, I, that was one of the first things I asked because I know rates were at two and 3% and it was a great way to, to save money. So I'll dig in as much as someone wants the help (coughs) and try to find areas to, to save them a little bit of money and help try to increase what they're contributing. That's cool. Trayvon. Um, I'm just, I'm just listening right now, honestly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, uh, well, and Trey does like more like, uh, options and yeah. kind of like more crazy stuff, which is, I think what people think it is Right. like that yeah, stuff is complicated. The stuff that AG likes to read about reading the charts. Right, like right. when you think about day trading, you think about options trading, you think about all these like complex, like financial kind of instruments, right. That are co- re- cause you're talking about the very basic long term. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to preach. Like all of that stuff that AG understands. And I'm obviously you understand too, but it's like, that's not what you're doing. Yeah, you're right. saying this is a 30 year yeah, yeah, when right. you're old, you're going to have right. fucking money right. because no one wants to be the old person that has to still work at the end of the day. Like, I, when I go to any of these places and somebody, unless they want to be there cause they're bored, they're 85 and they're still working. You're like, fuck man. Like that's why you have to do what Cole mm-hmm. just said, right? Joe now. Right. Mm-hmm. And then right. I'd love for, um, the example of the lady that motivated me. So there's some 90 year old woman that, uh, Joe broadly kind of told me about that is like my hero that Joe works with on dividends. And it's what honestly, when I understood this is what made me think. I need to be like this because she created a portfolio that is paid really well and, Mm -hmm. and then is not a burden to her family. And then there's going to be plenty left over and she's not some crazy, you know, like there was, it wasn't an un, uh, wasn't a crazy situation where she was some big business person or something. So I don't know what you're able to say, but I think it's a cool story. It goes back to dividends. She has, you know, a multi-million dollar portfolio and you know, most people, you, by the book, as you get older, you make your investments more conservative. Mm-hmm. Not everybody follows the book and everybody's different <laughs> in their philosophy. And, and this woman in her nineties, she actually just passed away okay. uh, a couple months ago, but she, uh, she had everything, not only everything in stocks, but, uh, but individual stocks, which is, you know, considered to be even more aggressive, more aggressive than owning a mutual fund with stocks mm-hmm. in, inside mm-hmm. of it. And, 
the uh, she understood the 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 point that I try to get across to everybody that takes a long time to learn is that your dividend income is paid based on how many shares you own, yep. not what those shares are worth. So if the market fluctuates up and down, that doesn't change your dividends. She's been doing this for a long time and she, she gets it. So the, the unique thing about her is that she was legally blind. Mm. She couldn't, she couldn't, um, watch the, the stock news on the TV. She could, she could see a little bit, but she couldn't see, uh, well enough to see what, what was going on. So she would call me from time to time and just say, Hey, tell me what's going on with the stock market. And then she would start laughing. She would say, not that it matters anyways, because I'm still getting my dividend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And, uh, you know, so just same, same conversation every month and she would laugh and, and she'd just say, is it red or is it green? And I, you know, Doesn't I don't matter. care either way. And you know, it's uh, her money's up, you know, three or 400,000 uh, or down three or four, yeah, up or down three or 400,000, but, 400, she's still getting paid. but she just needed her, you know, her but dividends. she was like six so, figure level dividends. Yeah. And that was the point is that she's chilling. Yeah, so, you yeah. know, it's just coming in. And I bet, <laughs> I bet her and her husband, uh, you know, probably they didn't, they never made a hundred thousand a year. That's my um, point right there. Yeah. That's, that's fucking crazy. But they were, they, how long of a time do you think Joe, they were investing in strictly like dividend yeah, stocks, like I, 30 years. They started, they started younger than, you know, the average, especially, you know, back, mm -hmm. back in the day, I would say at least 30 years. Yeah. yeah. So don't make even six figures a year. 30 years investing and you're making six figures in dividends as you're older. But mm -hmm. it goes back to the priorities, right? Yeah, and exactly. That, that was top priority for them at a, at a younger age, even though, you know, <clears> they probably didn't know what they were doing. Back once, in once Joe told me that story and I, there was, a, I think it was the same time when I came in asking those questions, it was a few years ago. And then I go, then my mind completely shifted to the, the dollars that are left over after I pay the overhead, after I pay my taxes, how much income can I go buy back to like the wealth squad stuff, right? What income can I buy with these shares to go do it? And then I became addicted to seeing that number go up and I had to change some things when we did the business buyout and that, but now I'm back on that. Now I just was literally in there this week, restructuring some stuff and I'm back focused on it again, because in my life in most entrepreneurs life, in anybody's life, nothing's secure anyway. Let's get that straight. No one's nine to five secure. They can fucking fire you tomorrow, right? Even though that's what people think. I know for a fact, because I've had to create my own paycheck for 20 years, but when I thought in the market could go down, whatever too, but that was the first time I was like, wait, all right, none of, all of these companies are not going out of business. I'm actually, this, that was like probably my most secure paycheck of my life. <laughs> Besides the last time I got one from the coal mine. Yeah. But so that's funny that that made me feel that way when I understood it. Cause my, my whole life has felt high risk. And this is the first time when I was building that it didn't feel high risk, yeah. which sounds funny probably, but that's how I felt anyway. So Back to you, Danny. <clears throat> we kind of like danced around a little bit, but like, can you talk about the emotional piece of the equation? Because spark goes up, goes down, up, down. Yeah. It's definitely not linear. Right. So like, when you have the, you know, 50, 60 year old, whatever it is, um, calling you yeah. because the market's down and saying they want to do X, Y, or Z. It's like, how do you talk them off the ledge? Like what's your, what's your strategy look like? Give yeah. me some of them stats, Joe, about yeah, the well, dick. You know what? <laughs> um, it doesn't happen as often as what you would think, especially the people that have been working with me for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, because we have this conversation when, you know, the first time we would meet, I would. I'll tell you, like, this is not a staircase that goes up every, every year. There are, there are bad years in the market. Last year was a, was a bad year in the market. So, uh, people don't panic as much as what you would think. Mm -hmm. The same people panic every year or, or over and over. Mm. And it doesn't even matter if it's a bad year or not, it could be a bad month, but they see that their statement went down a little bit and, and they, they panic. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think if I'm getting a lot of calls, then I think I'm not doing my job of setting expectations that it's normal for the market to go down. You know, the, the NASDAQ dropped 33% last year. The S and P dropped 19.4% last year that we see a 20% drop in the market on average every three and a half years. Mm 
Okay. So it just happened when this thing called COVID hit in, in February and March of 2020. And the difference this time is that it stretched out over, over the year last year when COVID hit uh, from February 20th of 2020 to March 23rd, the Dow dropped 34% in one month. It's so crazy. if I have someone panicking and, and so when that happened, when it dropped 34%, a lot of portfolios dropped about 25% because okay. you've got some money <clears throat> in bonds and different, different investments and things like that. So, uh, this year, uh, nobody's down 25% or at least, you know, people that I'm working with, you're not down anywhere near what you were down no. two years ago mm -hmm. or three years ago but you don't remember that. And so if you come into my office and, and I've, I've had a couple people, you know, act like they've never been through anything like this before and that the bottom is <laughs> falling out and I can show them you're down 6% last year. You were down, you know, four times as much yeah. just three years ago, but you don't remember it and they don't believe me. So I pull it up and show them and, that you know that kind of makes them feel a little bit better i guess I, I remember it's the and you also got my brain kind of flipped the opposite way right that when it was down that's where the opportunity was i just remember thinking this is my first because in 08 i was raising capital i wasn't in it right i was that was like i was early in the mp process this time around was the first time where i was like wait i can actually potentially take advantage of this situation so i went in with joe i didn't change my strategy i still was doing actually might even been more aggressive on buying the dividend stocks were way down so the yields were real high like and then it came out of that out of covid and i was like wow this yeah. this like really helped like i actually had a good opportunity to create wealth during that time because the people that are buying the stuff in that time is the ones that went but buying when it's down is one of the hardest things for people to do i'm i'm in the only business in the world that if things are on sale, people don't want to buy more of it. Mm -hmm. I was just about to say, That's I think it was you that said, whenever the market's red, that means shit's on sale. Yes. You should go buy. Yeah. yeah. And I would call him going, yeah. Joe, what's on sale same, today? Yeah, yeah. Same, same. Yeah. <laughs> my, my dad always says, when you're crying, you should be buying. And so when <laughs> you're mad, when you get that, you should put that on a t-shirt. And I, I'll tell my clients that, Kind of the the first I remember like the first couple of days in training one of the first things they told me was you're gonna have people that get their statement and they're upset and they're gonna want to drive by and throw a brick through your window and the best thing they can do is tie a check to that brick ah! when they, when they throw it in <laughs> so that you can invest. Well, yeah, because if you think like uh, all right, the market's down thirty five percent, so the stuff that was in is down, but I'm buying stuff at thirty five percent discount. The market's gonna come back where my money's going to be back even, but then I'm going to be up on this new stuff. It's pretty yeah. simple, but it's hard when everything's so red to go, wait a second, I'm down money. Let me give you more money. So yeah, that is, that's it, a hard, that's hard psychology. Uh, but the sale, uh, but if I you think to, about it like that, that's key though. The sale yeah, part. I have to, I have to think opposite of what everybody else thinks because yeah. we think if it goes down, Oh, okay. I should pull it out and put it in the money market and I'm just going to let it sit over here in the money market where it's safe until things get better yeah. in my 13 years of of working i have never had someone come in and say i think the stock market is going to have a great year <laughs> yeah. because there's nothing positive yeah. on the news there's nothing positive out there to make you think that it's going to have a great year it's always doom and gloom mm -hmm. so also i think when you understand these like basic financial things the opportunity of the money where it goes is key, right? So probably I don't have that watch on, but the other watch I got cost a lot of money. If I would have understood dividends, probably when I bought that watch, I would have had to <laughs> still buy it, which I might have, but I would have said I could be making, it's like an opportunity. I could be, I have an opportunity to make this much money every year with this money or wear this watch, which the watch has one up in value, but that's irrelevant. The, the key is that now that's the way I think. Yeah. No matter what I spend money on, if it's in hundreds or five zeros ish, I go, if I contribute that to this, I make this. When I spend the money, it's gone. It's qu it quit working for me. Mm -hmm. When I invest the money, it's continuing to work for me. I think that's a, a big yeah. like kind of mindset yeah. change too. Yeah. It's all about 
priorities, right? Yeah. And I'm I'm a pretty cheap person. I've I've splurged on a couple of things. You gotten better um, hanging out with us. Yeah, you're rubbing off on. I me know. <laughs> um, but you I want to see like, Joe wear a gold shirt. as I'm wearing yeah, Gucci same. shoes in yeah. the fucking financial. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I I wear the same clothes every day. Yeah. I won't go buy new clothes. Well, and, shout out Joe's an investor in Max Effort too. Joe's been so Joe supports everything. So appreciate that, Joe. And Good. my my mom would get on me because I I drove an 09 Toyota Camry for well I bought it I bought it new and drove it forever, and she would get on me saying, you know, these multi million dollar people don't want to pull in in your driveway at your office and see your 09 Toyota Camry. Yeah. But I'm like, I love, I love that yeah, car. Yeah. So, so I would argue that they want to see maybe the Tesla, but they don't want to see the rolls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if it's real high end, they're thinking fucking, I'm making a lot of money on me. Yeah. But if it's like, Oh, this guy's successful. And he's like, you know, cause you come off like a frugal person that still has really nice quality things though. So you're in the middle in my, I want my guy to, cause I'm, I'm half crazy. Yeah. I need somebody to talk me off the ledge. Yeah. So I want somebody that thinks that way first, but still is obviously su successful. And I think you're in that. I think you're really in that lane, Joe. Yeah. Honestly, everybody I've got, I've got people that have told me that they wouldn't do business with me if I drove a yeah. certain car. And I've got people that have asked why I yeah. do certain things. But I think so. you're down the middle, which is the, my play. kids are doing okay. They're going to, yeah. they'll be, they'll be fine. They're spoiled rotten. So that's for sure, all, that's so where all the money goes. I think now, all right. So someone's listening to like, fuck, I need to start investing yep. or let's say they are investing. But I think one thing you taught me super early was about all the different accounts and how important IRAs, yeah. of what you're investing into in the account type is mm -hmm. like, can make a huge difference. So why don't you break down yeah. like the, the, the so, different types? Uh, everybody wants to talk about, you know, are we talking about Amazon stock or Procter and Gamble stock? You know, want to talk about all these different, um, which stock should I buy? And there are thousands of stocks <laughs> that are going to do great over the next 10, 20, 30 years. That is not as important in my eyes as making sure you buy those investments inside of the, the proper account. And so there are, there are a lot of different options, but the basics are, you know, I think everybody and you know, the younger age, everybody talks about the Roth IRA. Um, I guess here, let me back up. So I think if you're just starting out and maybe you got your first job or, or whatever, you whoever you are, I think these are some important steps to follow. If your company offers you a retirement at work and they give you a match, that's step number one. That's Always free max out, max out the match, right, Joe? Yeah. So if you know most companies give you a three, a three or four percent match, and and they will tell you how much you have to put in in order to get that three or four percent match. Usually, if you put in five percent, you get a four percent match. So that's step number one. If you're if you came into my office and you're not doing that first, I tell you to leave, and that that's where you should go start. You have no business, you know necessarily talking to me because I don't give out free money and they're giving you free money. That's like so, 9%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, your right. money and their money. Yeah. <laughs> that's 9% right yeah. off the bat. So step number one is take advantage of your work retirement plan. If they give you a match after you have put in your 5% in that example, then in, in my opinion, you come back and, and look at an IRA whether it's a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA. And um, tell the difference between the so two. So the difference between the two are taxes. And I always say one of them helps you now, one of them helps you later. So the traditional IRA helps you now. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> you can get, if you qualify, you can get a tax deduction for contributing to this traditional IRA. So if you make $50,000 a year, and you put six thousand dollars into your traditional IRA, the IRS looks at it that you only made forty four thousand yeah. dollars this year. That six grand is deducted. There are there are certain qualifications that tell you if you qualify for taking that tax deduction or if you're allowed to contribute to a Roth. So this is I'm not telling you you should go out and, and do these things. You have to talk to Figure someone. It out. But um, the traditional IRA helps you now because you put that six grand in. It lowers what you pay on taxes this year. The six grand, so a lot of people don't don't think about this side of it, 
that six grand that gets invested and you pull it out in retirement down the road, you have to pay taxes on all of it when you pull it out. The, the thought process to that is that you are retired, so you're not working, so you're making less money, so you're in a, a lower tax bracket. So even though you have to pay taxes on it when you pull it out, it, um, you're in a lower tax bracket. So it, it, and you had that you full use. six grand to work for you that entire yeah, time. Yeah, so that six grand yeah. grows to a yeah. hundred grand. Yeah, you have a hundred grand. You know, thirty years down the road to uh, to use for retirement, but all a hundred thousand is taxable at your tax rate when you retire. Which we don't know what that what yeah, those yeah. rates are going to be. But in theory, so, it'll be lower than your income earning years. Yeah, which is what everybody right. thinks. So that's why I always say the traditional <clears throat> IRA helps you now because it gives you that tax deduction. You don't have to pay taxes on the 50 grand that you made. You only pay taxes on the 44,000 that you made because you put that six grand in. So traditional IRA helps you now, the Roth IRA helps you later. So same scenario, you make 50 grand, you put six grand into a Roth IRA, you still pay taxes on 50 grand. It doesn't help you now, it helps you later. That six grand grows to your 100 grand, same, you know, same example and you are retired and you want to start pulling that money out you get to keep all hundred grand it is not taxed that's the benefit of the roth is that money grows tax-free so um you know there are different so first of all no one can tell you which one you should do and and have a hundred percent accuracy because yeah. you would have to know what tax brackets are going to be when you retire and you'd have to know what that money is gross to um, between now and kind of depends just on the so, person's situation, yeah. right? Depends on the situation. So, you know, kind of rule of the thumb is the younger you are, the Roth is, is an advantage. The less you make the Roth is an advantage because you don't need the tax deduction mm -hmm. today. Um, I would argue that if you just want tax free money in retirement, the Roth, yeah. which would be nice to think about, Oh man, I'm not going to get hit every time I take this out. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I see it all the time. So I, you know, obviously I have a lot of retired clients. The Roth didn't, the Roth wasn't a thing until the late nineties. So, okay. um, retired folks that, um, you know, are pulling money out of their investments right now. They either don't have a Roth, didn't know about Roth. Mm -hmm. Roth wasn't around when they were investing or it was so new that they didn't trust it or sure. you know, just just didn't know about it. So a lot of my people would love to take more money out in retirement, but they don't want to pay taxes on it. And yeah. that's all they have is is pre-tax money. So it's money that they'll owe taxes on. So. And then for what's the category for the SEP IRA? Because there's a lot of business people. That yeah, listen to this so too. SEP, it, there's there's lots of different retirement plans. So, you know, everybody's heard of a 401k. Mm -hmm. um, if you work at a hospital or a school, they offer a 403B, which is basically the, the same thing. But if you're a, a business owner, then there are different plans as, as like a small business owner. So a, a SEP IRA is more for someone that owns their own business mm -hmm. and they are the only one that owns that business unless it's like a husband wife situation because your, your, um, your business is putting money into that retirement for you, but you have to put the same amount in for all of your employees. So if you put in 25% and, and Danny works for you, you got to put 25% mm -hmm. in for him. Well, you love Danny, but nobody's putting 25% yeah, yeah, yeah. for their, for their employees. So uh, a SEP is more for, so it's someone. really for like a solo entrepreneur, like yes. with one of the main business. Yeah. Yeah, so gotcha. there's two things. There's a couple things. If you're a solo business owner, a, a SEP could be one. And one that you and I have kind of touched a little bit about is I call it an owner K it's an yeah. owner only 401k that, um, is nice as well for individual and then smaller businesses with less than a hundred employees. There's a, there's a, a retirement plan out there called a simple IRA. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I have a lot of simple IRAs cause there's a lot of, you know, businesses, you know, I don't know. I, my cousin owns a daycare and she has 20 employees or whatever. And, um, you know, a simple IRA could be something could be a good fit for something, someone like that. If they don't want the expenses that come with a full 401k retirement plan. Sure. So the, everybody's situation is different. It just depends on what you've got going on. But 
coming full circle that picking that right plan, that right account is, I would argue, more important than which investment you're going to pick inside of it. Because it, when you get to age 60 and retire and you find out then that you owe taxes on all this money, mm-hmm. then, you know, you may think, oh, I messed up. I should have, I should have. Yeah. <laughs> which which whenever you bro- well, whenever you broke that down to me like you I think one thing that helped me understand the compounding and all that shit is seeing the graph I mean we talk about getting 1% better each day yeah. imagine if it's 3% better fucking each year that thing fucking takes oh, off yeah. so whenever you said you know it will grow let's say it's like 100 fucking mil right yeah. and you're like oh shit it's not in the right tax bracket we're about to tax you like fucking 30 oh, mil yeah. I'm like fuck that I want my money <laughs> so that made that made like a huge difference well yeah. and uh there is um so I've I have that um div tracker which so I have my accounts with Joe and then I have just another app that I that I use that does all like my dividend income. And what I love is they have a compounding chart. So like for instance, you know, I just went to Joe's the other day and picked uh or Joe picked this, but then I bought some of it and it was a stock that was like eleven bucks. It's eleven forty five, but the high f- I always like this when we pick a dividend stock, I want one that's paid for a long time. So they haven't paid for They've paid, you know, two years and it might be gone. This stock paid for 38 years. Right, that's the first thing I asked Joe. The height of it was $19. You know, most recently it was 11.45. So I'm like, all right, there's potential side for it to grow. It's paying 93 cents a share. So very basic. I spend $11 on a share, 11.45. It's it's at 11.50 today. We're up <laughs> five cents. Anyway, I make 93 cents per year per share. All right, real simple. Now. I bought a decent amount of it, but then I'm able to go on my chart and say, all right, what happens in 10 years if I don't touch this stock? And those shares, those 93 cents of each share are then rebuying. Because then, Joe, it's called what the drip program, right? Where it just Mm -hmm. automatically reinvests. So, yeah, the drip, drip, (laughs) baby. So it's like, all right, if I make two grand on this, it automatically buys two more grand of that stock every year. I don't touch it for 10 years. It's like, I hit the fucking 10 year compounding chart and uh, I'll tell you guys exactly what I bought, like uh, 2000 shares. And it says, if I just for 10 years, don't touch this, it reinvests, it grows normal amounts. I'll then have 4,781 shares that are also paying. So then from me making uh, 1800 a year, that stock would now pay me 6,500 a year. Now I didn't do anything. That's Except what? for own it the first time. So it's like, I think when you, now I know I spoke kind of fast, but when you, when you understand that very basic of that, some of these have been paying 60 years, JP Morgan, I think has been paying for a hundred. They were like one of the yeah. first ones, a hundred years. Like they're multiple. I think Procter and Gamble is 1890. There you go. Paying every year since 1890. So, so what was really a little bit scary though, during the pandemic I owned a decent amount of oil stuff, right? And they pay good dividends. There were some that got cut, BP, uh, Shell, like some of these big dogs, right? And you're like, we had talks like, hey, if they cut these dividends, like you don't know. So there is risk to a dividend. I don't want right. people to think there isn't. But those ones that have been doing it for, that's like all, that's why people own the stock. Right. So just know that like when you're talking to your financial advisor, if you hook up with Joe, whatever it is, that's what we talk about all the time. Where's the upside? How much does it pay and how long has it been paying for? Can Corey at 45 and Corey at 70 count on this stock? That's what we hope. So it can pay my fucking retirement, but you don't know. So it's like, that's the kind of thought process I like to go through. Yeah. So no, does that make sense, Joe? You hit the nail on the head that I tell people all the time. It's not guaranteed. The dividend is no. not guaranteed, but that's why we use our research to look at those companies that have not only have a long track record of paying since 1890, but raised it 30, 40, 50 years in a row. Yeah. And there's a lot, there's been a lot of bad years in the world yeah. in the stock market in the last 30, 40, 50 years, but yet these companies are still raising their, their dividend. And I'm going to give you guys one other example that is, uh, I was really proud of during the pandemic. So OKE, which is a pipeline company for um, natural gas and oil, is pays a really good dividend. So today the share is $68, right? And it pays a dividend of 360. So you pay, you give it, you, you buy one share for $68, you make $3 and 60 cents. Well, during the pandemic, 
What did it go down to? 16 bucks, Joe? I think so. We were fucking scared. I own a gang of it. And we're like, holy shit. They've been paying the dividend for, it's like 50 years, 56 years or something crazy like that. And you're wondering if they're going to cut it. But they withstand it. They continued to pay it. But we bought more. And here's the key. It was reinvesting. So as I was getting the dividend, which on that one, I make a decent amount of cash, like five grand a year. It's buying it at those, it was Lower buying at $24 yeah. a share. $30 a share, plus we were uh, buying more at the same time. So to Joe's point, that was one we believed in. We were buying it in that time frame. It was reinvesting in that. Then it goes back to $70 two years later. So now you got the upside of the equity and you locked in, you know, really good quality. So it's like, that doesn't happen all the time, but that most of the time these dividend stocks don't grow. They're not a growth stock. They usually stay right. 10, $20 ish around. So you're not going to get some crazy bump. But in that case, that was that was uh, you know a big increase too. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah. pretty. Good. It's like the ultra like mega sale. It's like the yeah. double wang That's banger what, sale, dude. I mean, yeah. I legitly think the yield was like twenty percent or yeah. something at that point. Because yeah, because <laughs> you're buying it on sale, and then since it's on sale, you get the dividend. That's again buying it for you already on sale. Correct. So that's gonna then pay you more. Ultra. Yeah. It was a great. it was a wanger banger. That's yeah. move. Nice. That's wet. <laughs> that's literally wet. Um. <laughs> So, all right, I want to uh, hold on. This, Joe's like, what did I get myself is, into? I think there's probably a lot of people um, now who are like have kids and stuff like that. I just want more information on this for future. You no, know, Danny's got a you know young one. Yeah, um, I got some homies that are having kids. Cool? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Nope, nope. Hey, not we yet. know Danny's at least got it once. Yeah, that's right. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, Congrats. Shout, Congrats. shout out Danny got shout it one time. Um, so, out. all right, let's let's <laughs> let's talk about how shout how do you said like because I think we're all doing this so that way like our kids have a better life than we do. So how can you like ensure that you're investing in making their, you know, their future successful. Yeah. So like what kind of things can you do? For yeah. Your, like what for are the kids? options? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, again, the investments are the same. I mean, you can buy stocks or, or bonds or individual stocks, mutual funds, whatever you want, but the type of account that's available for kids, it can be, you know, is, is different. So we just a lot did of, this not that long ago, literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people um, think college right away. So there's a 529 plan is the is the college savings account for for kids. Um, is that pre-tax account, Joe? It is. So depending on your state, okay. you get a you can get a state tax deduction for Got contributing it. to it. Not a federal, just state. So it's not a not a huge deal. Yeah. But it works like a Roth. It grows tax free. I got it. As okay. long as you use that money for, for education. For education. Okay. Cool. So some people don't like it. Um, one, if you only have one kid and you don't know if that, if yeah. that child. Well, and I don't really college. like college, so I wasn't really yeah. interested <laughs> in that. <laughs> Although I think yeah. my kids are going to go to college, but still, I was like, eh. So the call, the 529 plan is an option that we'll talk about. Uh, there are custodian accounts, so it you know it it has the the child's name on it. That money is supposed to be used for the child. Doesn't have the college restrictions with it. So that's what a I lot did, of people yeah. will will go down that route as well. There are um, you can have a custodian Roth IRA, but the um, the trick to a custodian Roth IRA it, or any Roth IRA, you have to have earned income. So if your baby is one year old and doesn't have a job, then Danny's trying to put him to work. Can you hypothetically yeah. hire your kid? There are. There's I'm, some. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, let's put it this way. I have custodian <laughs> Roth IRAs for my kids. Nice. So there are there are definitely ways, ways. to hire your children to um, put them to work. Higher, 100%. <laughs> and make them eligible to, to do things like that. Interesting. I put custodian accounts together for uh, my kids and for my nieces and nephews. And as they graduate, I give them shares of Amazon. Just try to like, it's more also just to start an account to let them know that, all right, I've been going to Uncle Corey's house for all these years. He's obviously kind of knows what he's doing. Yeah. If he did this for me, this is part of that process that I hope as they get older, then whether they need it to take it out for school or they leave it with Joe, I just told them to forget about it till they want to know more. And then hopefully I can push them that direction so they can build theirs. I just want to start that process. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Question so, specific. Yeah. Uh, Cause I got some, you know, I'm a great uncle now. So uh, shout yes, out you my are great nephews. Great uh, Legitly <laughs> a great uncle. Literally, I'm literally, I, I think I'm on track Joe to be the world's greatest uncle. Well, like, and to be a great, great uncle. No, that's what I'm saying. Like the third grade. I, I might be the four. I know what I'm saying is I might be a four like, or five time. Great. Great. great I just great, need great, like great. one of them to, you know, 
yeah, pop one out of like 18, and I'm – I'm on. I might get a world record, Guinness world record for the world's greatest uncle. Straight up, no, no cap, no cap on <laughs> no that. No cap on that. Um, all right, but how, how? All right, so how can I like? How did you buy them the specific shares? Did you just make an account and you're like, hey, here's I had to get order. all their information and I set up an account and a custodian, uh, a joint account with me and the and my nieces and nephews. Gotcha. And then basically we bought it and just put it in there, or gifted it to. I forget how Joe did it, but I think it's how we did it. Yeah. Right? How do you do that? Yeah. Same. Right. However same you thing. want. All yeah, right, same, yeah. so you basically just got to go to the – make sure you get their Social Security and everything like you would set up a normal account and go to Joe and you show, you just set it up jointly. Gotcha. And what I do is I give them a nil envelope as they graduate. Oh, Here's God. your shares. Here's Joe's card. And, you know, and that's – I don't know. Even though it's like Amazon hasn't done anything crazy since then, but I think just them just knowing that it. I care, you know yeah. what I mean? It, it just – and that hopefully it starts that process and that dialogue, you know. Because that's, that's what I wish somebody – like. In the valley, which us three can def like, there's none of this talk going Dude, on. Dude, fuck right. no. Come there's on, no man. one yeah, talking I was going to say, anybody else Come buying on. them shares no. of stock? No. Yeah. So there you go. No, 100%. So I think like that is like the thing I'm probably the most bullish on is just trying to start like that talk, man. Like I forced Bobby to, to go basically talk to Joe. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I these young dudes, same thing with you guys. Like, you know, Trey obviously is doing his own craziness uh, in trading, but it's like, but you're all in it. That is my goal. Everybody that I work with, that they're in it. I just, because it's so important and I wish I would have started sooner, which is, you know, come from working with Joe. So it's like at some, that's why when Alex wanted to go shadow Joe, he shadowed Joe a couple times. He thinks he wants to do this, but he loves doing the stuff like Trey does. And I'm like, this is amazing because he already knows. First off, he knows more than I do because he understands what Trey does. But second off, he went and saw what Joe does. Like he understood what he was saying to him. He didn't even realize that his understanding is already far greater than most of the clients that probably walk in at 17. He was just like, yeah, I just traded the spy yesterday, <laughs> read this chart. I clipped 150 here. I clipped this for 60. I mean, me like $200 yesterday. So it's like him understand, like, dude, that to me, like, well, it's half gambling too. So we yeah, got to watch yeah, that portion. But yeah, but the reality is though, that understanding is so far greater than whatever I understood it just makes me happy because that's what I was trying to do mm -hmm. you know and lastly I'll kind of talk about like my mom you know invested money with Joe and had it has done really well she she sat down with them he explained everything they built dividend portfolio they've increased their money and in you know invite invite uh, invest in GameStop on accident before it blew up <laughs> made like 1500 bucks in the same day I had my mom and Andon ask me about stock and so that right there was like we we're here we're here now because yeah. if that's what's happening but my mom mentioned this joe and you could speak to this the entry point was way difficult back in the day you had to have a broker really only rich people were teaching their their family about it there's no resources there's no online there's no like the entry point to buying a stock was so difficult when we were growing up and i think that's part of why the dialogue was not really existent on top of it that now i could be in my trailer back home 20 years later and go on YouTube and learn my fucking self yeah, and then get on Robin hood when I'm 18 and buy my first share. You have no reason not to be involved at some capacity at this level. It, it, it every resource is there. And right. that's why me and my mom talked about this a bunch of times. Like it felt like it was light years away to understand this back then Yeah, because well, there's just, social you know, media exactly. And, and just internet the opportunities there. Everything. So, yeah. but to, but still people need help just one-on-one -on -one too, like Joe's doing because they still don't know. So, yep. um, well, good, cool. Well, I just got a cool thing. I think yeah. we should all give our favorite stock picks right now. Yeah. I don't like, think like, Joe can. He, can you, Joe? I can't. You, yeah. He ain't allowed. All right. You can. How you, how you, we, not, I can't give any recommendations. Yeah. Uh, can you rate him? Can you give us a thumbs up? Thumbs up? <laughs> no, he's not allowed. <laughs> no, none. Hey, we can go dog pick of the week though. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Sorry. My dog pick of the week. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so this one I'm sh I'm super bullish on because I think there's a few uh, takeaways here. So obviously I like to, Probably and I heard this <laughs> multiple times, is that you know you should invest into what you use, what you yep. know, what you you know what you're a fan of and stuff like that. So my dog pick of the year, I guess, is Shopify. Yep. You know we use Shopify for literally every single business, every business that we use, uh, every website that I build, I'm now using Shopify. Um, and for a while, like last year, it's been one of those ones that I've been looking at, but it was so high yeah. that I was like, 
there's it, it's not like a good entry. I could go put my money where somewhere else. They split. They got this dooming recession talk going on. It's getting fucking hammered. So I was in it, buying it. But now we're back. They raised their prices. Yeah. It's going nuts. Shopify is my number one pick. Yeah, Shopify is an absolute killer. And to your point, a lot of the stuff that um, I buy is stuff that we use and I like and understand. And that's Warren Buffett talks about that all the time, don't he, Joe? Like, yeah. he, he likes Coca Cola, yeah. Coca Cola, McDonald's. Right. I mean, but if, <laughs> I mean, but if you look at what those companies own, yeah, I mean, half time you don't even realize that oh. Procter and Gamble is Pantene shampoo, Tide laundry yeah. detergent. It's all shit people diapers, are using forever. Yeah. yeah. Listen, so. I didn't know M O owned Black and Mild. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Black and Mild. Yeah, that that one, did it for me. Yeah, yeah, you got a rep. Yeah, that sold you. <laughs> so good. I mean, I was contributing to the Black and Mild fund back in the day, and now I'm an owner. It's yeah. been amazing. Uh, Daniel, you got it's, a pick? It's the same. Wild, for me. Yeah. What is it? Shopify. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I mean, I live and breathe Shopify yeah, all day every long. Every single day. So, like, I mean, we understand it at such a deep level, and it just makes all the sense in the world. And, they're, and I, with the way people purchase nowadays. I don't see how no one, how no company can do e-commerce business and not use Shopify. Yeah. Like, there's no way. Squarespace cannot compete. No. Like, none of those ones have the agility for a real, true e-commerce business to, like, actually, like, succeed. We're on the forefront of it because we've been in it for so long and understand it. That's why we're also bullish on it. We know it's not going anywhere. Yeah. And how easy it's made our lives. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Yeah. Oh, one thing I like you just said is that you feel like an owner when you buy stuff. Yeah, that's like my favorite shit. Like whenever I see Tesla, you know, although I don't own one, I see one driving, you know, and I'm like, yep, owner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, owner. well, because <laughs> there was uh, something I was. Oh, some, yeah. It's the truth though. Something I saw online about to create real wealth, you have to have equity, and when you buy shares, you're an owner. You're an equity owner of the business. Like, and I think that when you understand, you're buying part of the company. You are part of the company. They send you. When they vote on the fucking shit, they send it to you in the mail. Like, I think being and taking part in that is like you should feel that way. A lot of people don't, but they should. I yeah. agree. You can, with that uh, you can either own an investment or you loan an investment. So when you buy bonds, you are loaning your yeah. money to a municipality or something like that to to use your money, kind of like the the bank would. Um, but then when you're buying stock, buying equity, you you're an owner. Or you can be a consumer and never own. That's or right. most of you're going to be a consumer anyway, so you might as well own. Mm-hmm. You know what That's I mean? Right. You, might as, you might as well. So I kind of look at it like that. You should own, you should own the shit that you consume. You got That's it. That's right. Which is what basically. Every yeah. every month whenever I fucking pay my Verizon bill, I'm like paying myself. So it's fucking win. Well, yeah, because now I just bought some Verizon <laughs> too. I'm about win. to get a dividend. <laughs> like at least, at least I'm getting hammered for 300 bucks. I'm about to get some of it yeah, back. Yeah, that's right. Fuck. That's Trey, right. you got a pick? No, nah, I'm not giving a pick. Well, yeah, that's well, I, yeah. too too aggressive. What about crypto? I'm not giving any. All right. No All picks right. from Trey. Right. No picks. Parlay? No picks. <laughs> that's the other podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, anything else for Joe? Hey, I got a disclosure. Go ahead, Joe. Read. Sweet. I you had to do that. We've never right. had one of those. Go Shout ahead. Out. That was Trey's disclosure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. That was my no. disclosure. No picks. Yeah. yeah. Just now. The host of this event and Edward Jones have an existing business relationship. This event is not an endorsement or testimonial of the services provided by Edward Jones Financial Advisor Joe Johnson. Nice. That's some good shit. I expect yeah. that to be That's longer, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little <laughs> too short longer. for me. <laughs> that was a little too short. Yeah. All right. Joe can't get in trouble because he, re- he read that. Yeah. Um, we good? Round table? Mm-hmm. All right. Shout out Green fucking Fizz. Shout, Shout out. out. <laughs> That's, some, that's some good shit. It is some good shit. Get you some Great at uh, Max <laughs> MaxEverMuscle.com. Uh, shout out Sam Adams. Uh, I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny. At Trace Speed with no picks. The graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. And that is Joe Johnson. And we are out.